Hello, welcome to the Furious Driving monthly blog. This is a thing that Patreons and members get to see at the end of one month, and then a month later, the rest of the world gets to see it as well, with hopefully all the spoilers that were pre-rolled and revealed in the last month members video being revealed. Uh, spoiler alert, not everything I plan to do got done. Surprise, surprise. But yeah, if you'd like to see these spoilers and behind the scenes things, which is also quick Q&As, mailbag, that kind of stuff, a month ahead of time before it comes out on the real channel, then uh, yeah, join up as a channel member or a Patreon in the links down below. And before we get going with this one, there is something which isn't in this particular video because uh, exciting news, Diamond Bright, who I'm obviously very, very, very happy to have on board as a sponsor. I've been really happy with their products for a long time, so I'm very happy to have them on board helping keep the channel going. Um, Again, check the link in the description below because next week I'm very happy to announce we've got a big competition with Diamond Bright. We're gonna have five lucky winners getting an amazing prize, but you're gonna to have to be a bit creative and you're gonna to need to be using a bit of Diamond Bright product on your own car. So, what's, what's Wednesday today? You're almost a week warning to start thinking about what you could do to clean your car with a Diamond Bright product, how you can make that exciting and interesting because it's a creative competition as well. Right, other thing before we get going is it's Christmas, hence the Christmas jumper. Well, it will be by the time you see this next video I'm about to film. Um, Furious driving mugs, t-shirts, stickers, clocks, notepads, phone cases, uh, sweatshirts, you name it, all these things. Furious driving, Rover logo, uh, Rover 200 stuff, front view, side view, Alpha 145, uh, Scrappage Scheme Survivor, T-Shelf, Broken Rovers, Shattered Dreams, all those things are on Redbubble. Um, so they are print on demand, I don't keep them in stock. So if you're interested in getting one of those for Christmas time, and considering everyone's gonna be shopping online as well this year, maybe get your orders in early. I'm not trying to push the stuff particularly hard, but if you want one of those things and not be disappointed by time delays because print on demand obviously takes time. I will just also, also mention before we get cracking, these Furious Driving hats, these are not print on demand. I've got, I think, a half dozen or so left from the first run of these. So if you're interested in getting hold of one of these, I think the web email address is shop at furiousdriving.co.uk. I'll put a link in the description. This will be first come, first serve. There's literally a couple of these left. So if you want to grab one of these for the cold winter mornings, which are now upon us, now would be a good time. Now the video. Hello and welcome to the October Members and Patreons Behind the Scenes Chat. You join me today from the Volvo, where I'm currently in not very sunny Bedfordshire, because I'm on the way to Lakes Autos to have a look at a field of Volvos, basically. Now the weather today is disgusting. I brought the drone along, I was hoping to fly the drone over it, but I'm not sure if we'll get a gap in the weather long enough to do that. thought if I'm coming out to look at a field of Volvos and a breakers I really ought to bring my Volvo as well. <clears throat> and the reason I'm up in the area today is because a friend of mine is leaving the country. He's emigrating so bye Alex. I hope you have a great time. I, you may well be on a plane by the time this comes out um, because I don't think you're a Patreon at the moment. But really cool. I drove his car which is a lovely car you'll see soon and he found this little Corgi 740 when he, have, when he was having a big clear out of the house. So, a massive thank you, he thought I would like that. He was right, I do like that. But anyway, the weather has now closed in so badly that the TomTom -tom can't even find the satellites anymore to work out where we're going. Well, so this is the behind the scenes what's been happening, what's going to happen video, which I'm trying to do every month. And does suggest I need to plan some things because I'm not very good at that. Now, depending on the weather and my ability to get out into the rain, you will see various things over the next couple of weeks. Um, if you're watching this on the uh, catch up in four weeks time, hopefully these will have happened. Uh, both the P6s have got big progress. I said in the last video I was looking for a workaround rather than a bodge. I have had a package arrive with sporting equipment, which will be the solution to my no longer fitting engine mounts. So yeah, I'm gonna do a proper uh, workaround on that, I'm borrowing some tech from the world of drifting on my uh, Rover 2000. And that was possibly the cheapest fix I've ever done. It cost about six pounds, including postage, which is nothing. 
So that'll be something I get onto in the next couple of days because I can do that indoors while it's raining. And secondly, oh, I've had some good luck with the V8 because one of the holdups on getting that car sorted has been the exhaust. I may have mentioned this in one of the previous videos, but I don't want to stick the old three and a half litre exhaust on there. It's too restrictive. So I was talking to people about getting one made up and it turns out getting exhausts made up is very expensive. Um, spoke to various friends in the trade. Uh, Valley Gas, I think I kind of settled on taking it to because I've known them for so long and they really are a great hot rod shop. But I was getting a quote for the two manifolds, the wire pipe and the back pipe, which is going to run into the thousands basically because it's a, it's a big job. <clears throat> Then they said, well, you know, if you can find an off-the-shelf manifold, because the restriction out of the block on the Rover V8 is pretty intense. So if you can find an off-the-shelf manifold that will do the trick, that will save you an awful lot of money in the build. So I, yeah, fair enough, then put taking the car down there on hold temporarily while well, I had a bit of a search around, but I wasn't hopeful because a 4.6 V8 into a P6 is a fairly niche manoeuvre. But I put the question up on the uh, on the P6 Facebook group. I've got lots of suggestions of places to go to, but to be honest, I tried a lot of them already and it was looking like I was gonna to have to go down the getting it made route. And someone replied, yes, I've got a stainless set, which I had made up a year or two ago for exactly the same project. Then I changed my mind about the engine and they've been sitting in my garage ever since. Do you want them? And the laptop hadn't even hit the floor before I was in the car because what he wanted for these unused manifolds was pennies, well, not pennies, hundreds, but still pennies in comparison to the thousands. And then it really kind of knocked me for six with, I've also got a stainless Y pipe. Would you like that? So, yes, I would. So I've now got the two manifolds and the Y pipe all in stainless for a price in the hundreds rather than the thousands. So I'm very happy with that. And here's a picture of me pretending they're reindeer antlers because it's nearly Christmas. So yes, you'll be seeing pictures of that being installed interfrastically. Well, what else is going on? Oh, the convertible. Well, that's as you know, is nearly there. Just waiting on the MOT so I can take it up to trimmers, but I can't take a car with no roof to the MOT station and it won't stop raining. So, <clears throat> so as soon as I get a couple of dry days when I'm at home, then we can get an MOT sorted on that car and we can then go and get the roof fixed and then that car is nearly done and out of here. The Alpha I know you will ask me about, um, that has not moved as far as I'm aware, it's still over with the garage waiting its turn in the queue, I will go and actually chase that tomorrow, I'm going to be passing by the garage tomorrow, so I'll knock on the door and see if anything's happened on that. In a way, I'll be glad if it hasn't happened because that means I won't have to pay for it. And because the convertible's still in its parking space, I've got nowhere to put it. So I don't mind waiting another couple of weeks on that one. And if it winds up being inside the garage over winter, that would be even better because it gives it some storage out of the weather. Tomcat, nothing has really changed on since we did the wheels. I could do with getting the tracking sorted out on it now. And the Mercedes, again, the rain has just been a real hamper in getting stuff done because as soon as I take the cover off, it seems to pour with rain. So cutting and grinding back to metal in the wet is not a great idea. So that's kind of on a hold up. So yeah, I really do think I need to get some kind of carport put in where the Mercedes and the convertible slash alpha live because that's just a damp spot. And the wind just blasts through there. So yeah, I've spoken to Dave, the builder neighbor who you, many people have commented on the state of his drive over the last year or so, looking at the piles of bricks and building materials that are always outside there. Because he is a builder, so hopefully he can do something for me. If he can't before winter, I might have to go and take matters into my own hands and do some kind of cheap bodge just to keep the cars dry over winter because it's just getting a bit much. The Mini, if there's any Mini fans out there, I'll be honest, I haven't touched the Mini in a couple of weeks. So I'm hoping that's still okay in its, in its lock-up. At least it's dry and it's out of the weather, so nothing bad is happening to it while it's being ignored. And the Volvo. The Volvo, I've just been driving. <coughs> Halloween costume sorted. Some kind of weird antlered animal. Look at these things, they are absolutely beautiful. The chap I bought these things from, he has polished the bejesus out of this one. He's also cut this center bar out from the middle bit here between the two manifold pairs, I suppose, um, just to make it look a bit neater. Uh, he's also 
ground down these welds and then polished it. And I don't think I will try and do that because he did actually say he went through it in a couple of places and had to repair with weld, which is not something I fancy doing. But I will polish this one to match that because that's absolutely beautiful. And for the price, it was a, a, a incredible, absolutely incredible. This is a Toyo Sports um, pair of manifolds. I've got the stainless Y pipe to go with it as well. So that's all just amazing. So now I just need from the Y pipe back to the back of the car. So I may have it done as a double pipe, I don't know. Not sure, many, many things to choose from. But this means this can now go onto the engine, which means that's one final chunk taken out of the jigsaw of making the V8 go. I'm just trying to sort out the fuel system and all the rubber hoses at the moment, just to make it all absolutely lovely. Do I put that somewhere safe so it doesn't fall on the floor? The White Rover, sporting goods. This is a trick from the drift people that will have that engine mounted beautifully in imminently now there's an admission of guilt slash failure on the convertible i unveiled the new max speeding rod coilovers to lower and do the suspension on on quentin the convertible unfortunately didn't quite get the right parts they don't do a rover 200 setup i went for the civic setup but it wasn't quite right. It's for a slightly different version of the Civic. So as a couple of people pointed out, it's only a two pin lug um, bolt on the top of the, the strut on the coilovers. Uh, and that Rover's got three lugs, which I knew that because I've changed them on the coupe and it's exactly the same parts. In fact, the gas coilovers that are on the coupe actually came from a convertible. They were second hand. Uh, so yeah, I knew well enough there were three lug. I just never paid attention as I was unboxing them. Um, I have spoken to Max Speedy and Rods and they've been really helpful. They've had a look at the other three lug tops they've got and they don't think they will fit onto the 200. The Accord ones are very similar but not quite similar enough. Um, so my next step before I send those back is having a look if I can take the old struts out and swapping the top plate from the existing Rover suspension um, strut um, and putting it onto the Max Speeding Rod coilover, which is a possibility, but we'll have to see if I can do that. Otherwise, those will have to go back or be given away as a competition prize. Maybe we can do that. We'll see what they say. Now, what's next to say? Oh yeah, questions. A couple of people did mail in a couple of questions and comments. Let's have a see what people said. Now, first of all, hello Davey. This is a Scottish car enthusiast TV, Davey. He has given me one of the hardest questions I've ever had to answer. If I had to slim down the fleet to three cars, what would they be? Well, the easy one, first of all, the Rover 2000. I've had that car forever. Bought it when I was 17, so that car's going nowhere, which means I've got two more choices. And the cars I've got to choose from, Rover 2000, Rover 3500, chronologically this is, Mercedes W123, the Volvo 740, Rover Coupe, Alpha 145, Mini Cooper, if I missed something. Oh yeah, the convertible. I think that's everything. Mm, okay, so I've got to make two choices out of those. And that's a really, I've been thinking about this all week actually, trying to work this one out. I think, I don't often make good financial decisions, but the Mini would be a good financial decision to keep because that's a potential investment. It's a very early car that can only go up in value. For once I'll have a car that I'm not hemorrhaging cash on he says, well, the timing chain snaps in the background. Um, so that's two cars, the Mini, the Rover 2000. Then I think, as I've already got one big saloon with the P6, I need to take a hot hatch as my other choice, which means really keeping the 145 or the Tomcat. The Tomcat is a really good car. I lucked into that by chance. I never wanted one. I wanted one when they were new, but I never thought well, I want to get one of those. But now I've got one, I really like it. The 145, that was kind of a car I really, really wanted. But has it been a bit of a disappointment in terms of the rust and things on it? There's only one way to solve this one. Heads Alpha, tails Tomcat. Heads. It's the Alpha stays. Sorry Tomcat. So my fleet is now the three car fleet, the Rover 2000, the Mini Cooper, the Alpha 145. But I've never driven the 123 yet. That'd be a good project to, to hang on to. And the Volvo is so nice. Oh, this is too difficult. Davey, I can't really answer that question. Secondly, Gideon, aka Maxi9 in the comments, what's the most memorable photo shoot I've ever done? Now, 
I assume you mean my job as an actual photographer. And there's a lot of those which are very memorable for all kinds of reasons. Not all of them are good reasons, but mostly they're okay. Um, there's the locations that make them pretty memorable. Like I've been to the Arctic Circle on a photo shoot. That was quite memorable. Um, the impossibility, like one time I turned up a guy's house to shoot three cars, which would take all morning, maybe longer, maybe most of a day. And he said he had to go out in 20 minutes. Would that be okay? That wasn't okay. Um, one that's very memorable, but hasn't been in a magazine yet. I put a bluesmobile in a shopping center and we drove a bluesmobile through a shopping center. That was very memorable, but it's too recent to, to call it a memory yet. So I'm gonna go with the time that me and a writer friend called Mike Renault borrowed a Ferrari Dino from uh, a car hire, from a classic car hire rental place. And we took it out for the day and we had a lovely time driving this car. And it was horrible weather. It was like winter time and disgusting and cold and wet and nasty. And we had a great time, we both loved this Ferrari Dino. And at the end of the day, the guy said, yeah, you like that, we're selling that. If you want to give us maybe 20,000 pounds for it, you guys can have that. And we looked at each other and said, oh, 10 grand each, that's a lot of money for an old car. And that's possibly my most memorable because it's my biggest failure ever to buy a car that would have been a great car to have, which is now worth 100,000. It's kind of, yeah, pay the mortgage off territory. Ah, there are others. Maybe I'll do a video. I think I'll do an entire video on what's been the most memorable photo shoots on the photography channel one day because I've not done much with that for a few weeks. And thirdly, um, this is from uh, N, N. Rudd. Uh, I, th I think that's Neil, isn't it? This is more of a comment than a question. Uh, Hubnut might need some advice on fitting a fuel pump to a Rover 75. Hubnut needs to not take my advice on fitting his fuel pump because that would involve cutting a hole in the car and ruining what is quite a nice car. Don't do that, <laughs> Don't do that, Ian. Don't follow my advice. And now, finally, not me drinking coffee, but that will happen in between then and now. The inaugural, the first ever Furious Driving Mail Time which I've lost already. Now, it was not as big as I was kind of hoping. I'll be honest, I was expecting some crazy stuff, some weirdness, all right, well, the camera's falling over. The camera's getting in on the weirdness act. I'll be honest, I was expecting some pretty random weird stuff, but the lady at the post office can, did say it can take a little while for stuff to arrive, for the box to be set up, and there could be kind of teething troubles. So I've only got a couple of items to actually talk about today. So we'll make the most of what we've got because we've got some really nice stuff. Now, first of all, in a genuine rumours bag, because it is a genuine MG Rover part, this is a useful bit of trim, a rubber trim, to go on the back of the Rover convertible. It sits on around the rear glass where the hood meets in. I'm a little confused as to exactly where it sits. There is a letter in here explaining what it is and where it goes. Please find enclosed a body rubber of a Rover 200 Cabriolet, part of the body roof setup. Uh, it's got the black screws and trim pins that go with it as well. Fantastic. And tells me where to find it on the Rimmers website. So hopefully this can be used on the 200 when the hood goes on. It'll be very handy indeed to make it look a bit nicer. So he had a 200 convertible, a, what year did he say? 19, a 97 one, um, R Edge. SE, which he was doing up, but sadly sold in the meantime, so that was no longer required. He was after both of them, but they're kind of hard to come by, apparently, so thank you very much indeed for that, Darren. That'll be really useful indeed. Now, secondly, after my last video involving the Volvo, when I was talking about the radio, other regular viewer, regular commenter, Richie, who not only is a bit of a Volvo fan, also works in the car audio industry, uh, was kind enough to send me over a Volvo 740, 760, 940, 960 DIN fascia kit adapter. Let's open this thing up and have a look. I should have got a knife ready for this. This is that, from Connect2. I've used their stuff before. Generally pretty good items. So this sits on the dashboard and I've got a weird slopiness on the Volvo dashboard and this takes the place of that so you can then slide a radio in there. He's also been kind enough to send over the right bit of wiring loom as well, so I can connect something up to that big white Volvo block of wiring, and that can go into the pretty much standard, go into everything. Now, I've got a couple of choices of radios to fit. Huh, you may notice the uh, cover sills from the Alpha 145. Um, not the Sony from the Mini, that's way too modern. What I was considering was this Sony, which is oh, quite old now, but 
it is a fold-out screen, so when it's turned off, it's just a black fascia plate with the LCD hidden in it. And it looks more, thanks to the polarizer, it's actually very dark indeed in real life. So when it's turned off, it looks like just a black plate. So it's quite discreet, quite subtle. I had it in the P6 for a long time because you couldn't really tell a new radio had been fitted. So I might go with that, but I might actually go with this one, which I know for a fact is mid-90s because I bought it ex-demo in about 1990 six or seven I think so that would be the kind of period upgrade the car might have had when it was relatively new um, so that's an option that Alpine there is a fair bit newer I think that's certainly post millennium so maybe 2005 2010 ish um, but that one also has a CD changer up there which could be fitted to the car as well so I could go full-on lots of fun stuff on that hmm there's an option huh there's the uh, Haynes manual collection. Many of the cars I've owned in the past and a couple of random ones which I haven't. Right, so that's a couple of very useful items that have turned up from you very lovely people out there in furious driving viewer land. Thank you for doing that, I really do appreciate that. Two extra stop press moments as I'm coming to the end of filming this video. First of all, uh, the Volvo got used yet again this morning. Have a look at this little cutaway. Just when you think the day is going really swimmingly and you can go out, do various jobs, edit some videos, record the next numbers video, which I should be doing right now, you go in from work and find you've got a slow puncher. So once again, lots of stuff in the boot of the Volvo going places. And even the Mercedes on the drive, Volvo can do fixing stuff. And secondly, I was just wondering if I should go and chase up what's happening with the Alpha earlier this week. In fact, just after I recorded a bit in the Volvo talking about what's going on with the cars, and I got a phone call from Trevor saying he'd made some progress on the thing. And it turns out the, the driver's side strut that's falling under, brought, the driver's side strut is not as bad as he first thought it was. It's actually been plated on the inside of the turret. So the driver's side strut replacement that I bought is semi-redundant. So what he thinks he can do is he can kind of just repair the original cosmetically and the internal strut that someone's added looks like it's probably okay. So the driver's side is good. Passenger side one, he hasn't taken that strut out yet, but we can kind of see daylight through it. So I think we will be grafting that passenger side strut up in still, but it means the car is a step closer to being finished. He actually says he wants the car out of the workshop because that's currently indoors and has been for a few weeks in the winter storage spot for one of his own cars, which is currently a trimmer. And as soon as that car comes back from a trimmer, he wants his workshop space back. So in a way that's kind of good because it's going to push my car to the front of the queue. In a way that's bad because currently my car's in a nice dry environment. So, swings and roundabouts. Anyway, right, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you like my uh, furious driving festooned sticker uh, laptop, T shelf. Stickers are available in the Red Bubble store, obviously, but furious driving ones are. This one, though, hasn't been a strong seller, but I absolutely love it. This is the word Rover. Which way to go? This is the word Rover spelt out in Japanese characters because Rover and Honda, as you know, did the combined effort to create the 200 series, the coupe, the convertible, all the RHs and everything else. So that's why Ronda, maybe it should say Ronda rather than Rover. I don't know. I do like that. I need to get a t-shirt of that made up for next summer. Right, thanks for watching. And as always, thanks for being a patron. Thanks for being a channel member. Your membership patronage makes doing all the stuff on the cars so much easier. And this is the bit for in four weeks time when the non-patrons and channel members get to see this video. Um, if you would like to see these videos early on with everyone else, see the mail time, the Q's and A's, then hit the join button on either the channel member or Patreon. And there are links down below in the description. You can find it down there and you get to see this stuff earlier on. Um, if you would like to ask a question for the next month's Q&A, then do email it to uh, either the address which Patreons and members get, or if you're not a member and you're watching this in a month's time, send it over to bodyinthebooth at gmail.com and I'll try and include it in the next one. We'll build this section up a little bit more. And also mail time, if you've got weird stuff to send in, then do send it in. We'll have something to talk about. Please not the weird stuff that Ian seems to be getting from Wish at the moment. That's just, that's just strange. It was entertaining, but I don't think we need it here. But hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.